I've been in journalism for uh, just over 20 years. I worked in daily newspapers for 17 in total, and then I have been independent for about five years. And of course, that's a huge leap of faith. To, to be an independent journalist means that you no longer have a, a form in which to publish things. You have to make your own form. Seasick is about the changes that humans are making to the global ocean. So we're changing the chemistry of the very medium of life on the planet. You know, to me it was just, I'm a journalist and this was just the best story going in the, in the world. You know, what, what we're doing to the, to the planet, to the planet's main medium of life. And, and to me, see, it was, it was investigative journalism because it's out there, science, scientists know about it. They've got this body of primary knowledge and investigation about what's going on with, with the planet's main medium of life. And the rest of us don't know anything. It's not on the radar. It's not there and visible. I don't consider myself an environmental reporter. I consider myself a science reporter. And to me, there's a, there's a very, there's a big difference. And the difference mainly has to do with the way editors tend to see those two terms. Creating this book was, was an enormous challenge on every level. It was a huge challenge financially, a huge challenge emotionally, um, and also as a, you know, journalistically, because the, the information was scattered. So there were experts all over the world looking at different pieces of this great puzzle, and my challenge was to try to figure out who the best people were to describe these, these, these issues, and, and also to, to try to persuade them to let me follow along with them. And what I came to understand is that we have a small window in which to um, maybe not reverse the change, but to slow it down. And that if we decide not to do that, we are making, you know, we are, we are making a choice of death over life. And it, it occurred to me finally, I was actually at the bottom of the ocean at 3,000 feet in a submersible, and I realized that we have the ability to choose hope. I hope people will read seasick and I hope that they will go through enormous despair at the knowledge of what we've done to the planet. And I hope they will come out the other side and experience the marvel of hope and that it will energize and that it will be a catalyst to them to do whatever it is that they can do to try to move our future to a healthy one instead of to a sick one. Uh, winning the Grantham Prize has actually been a hinge moment in my life, in my career. Uh, so it's had massive knock-on uh, implications that I'm only now beginning to understand. Some of them have to do with how the book is seen is seen in the United States because it, it hadn't it didn't have a very high profile in the United States before the win. Um, part of it is that I'm getting speaking requests from all over the world, there's, you know, from not only the U.S., but a whole bunch of different parts of the world, to go and explain some of the information in CSIC. Part of it is just that it's given me a period of intellectual repose, which of course is always the most creative time. Well, the Grantham Prize is, um, is sweet, and it's sweet for a whole bunch of different reasons. It's sweet because it's recognition, but mainly the, the joy of it is that the jurors are such exceptions, exceptional journalists in their own right, and they have looked at this and said that it is a good piece of journalism, and that's what means the most to me, because in my heart of hearts, as I was researching this, I kept thinking, you know, I know this is a great story, I know that there's a, a wonderful piece of journalism here, and my, my hope was always that I could capture it, and to me, this prize means that I did. Thank you.